Hi, I'm Dr. Ruth the Pain Doc, founder of Chronic Pain Rescue, a soon coming telemedicine practice, which will be here shortly. And this is another installation of information I hope chronic pain sufferers can use. This session is called hashtag pain hacks for back, neck, and leg pain. If you saw my last video, I was sharing some things that would help you if you have chronic back pain. I have a few more things about chronic back pain, and you may already know them, but if not, I hope this is information you can use. If you have to walk or stand for prolonged periods of time, you should probably get a back brace that would be usually made out of canvas or that type of material. The important thing about the back brace is that it has metal stays or uprights in the back. Those are metal strips in a vertical alignment and on each side of the back. If you have an orthotist or you're working with a therapist, they actually can kind of manipulate these stays so that it actually matches the alignment of your spine so that that even if it's off the shelf, that kind of have a custom fit to it. And that back brace provides support for your back and therefore should lessen your pain, enable you to stand or walk for longer periods of time. Now, you shouldn't wear a back brace more than eight hours in a day. Reason being is the back brace is providing the support that your spine needs, but normally your core muscles would be providing that support. So if you're depending on the back brace and not using your core muscles, your core muscles are going to get even weaker. So you're actually putting yourself in a worse position if you're wearing the back brace all the time. So it really should be something that you wear because you're going to be on your feet a lot and the pain is very bad or you're going to be up on your feet a lot and you want to avoid having a lot of pain. That's the time to use it, not, you know, 24-7. The other thing that would be helpful for you is if you're preparing food or on your feet standing in one position for long periods of time. If you have a footstool, just a little footstool, something that you can put one foot on while you're standing. That would also help you to be able to stand for long periods of time without it causing terrible pain. Third thing, if you're not aware of your leg lengths, to have someone, a healthcare provider, a therapist, measure your leg length. It's particularly if you have pain only on one side of your back, one side of your lower back and not both, be checked for leg length discrepancy. Because if it's significant, if their leg lengths are not, you know, within a quarter of an inch of each other, you may have a shorter leg and and therefore that malalignment is contributing to your pain. And if you were to correct that by having an insert in the shoe, or if the difference is an inch or more, you have to have an addition made on that shoe, on the soul of that shoe, but just being properly aligned will help balance you and take care of pain. So those are the things I wanted to say about back pain. Talking about neck pain, most of us have really poor posture with our necks. You know, we, we walk with our heads in front of our bodies and our necks forward and our neck muscles are strained in that position. So it's important to have your head above your shoulders, your chin slightly tucked in. They call it military stance, but but just really think about your head being held high and above your shoulders. And even if you do that, if you're somebody that normally does have your head forward, you do that, you can feel the difference. Your muscles are no longer being strained. They're, they're relaxed in that position because you, the head weight, the weight of your head is actually on your spine where it should be and your muscles are not having to work. So it's a matter of getting into the habit because you probably have to remind yourself throughout the day, where's my neck? Where Where's my head and placing it upright while you're walking, while you're sitting, just to become aware of making that correction. But it definitely can help you. If you have to work at a computer, make sure that you're not like how my monitor is presently. You want your computer at eye level, your monitor at eye level, so that your muscles can be properly aligned and you're not straining your neck. I've even seen people watching television. They seem unaware of the fact that they're going to be watching for a long period of time. You shouldn't have your TV to your right or to your left so that you have to have your head in a turned position for long periods of time. You want it right in front of you, you know, neutral position so that you're not having the strain to do that. Lastly, if you're reading a book, it's it's not good to be looking down to your lap uh, for prolonged periods of time. You want to elevate the book. Now you won't be putting it up in front of your eyes, but even just to have one of those book pillows or, or even a regular pillow so that it's a slightly propped up and a nice 90 degree angle maybe or 45 degree angle and look down with your eyes as opposed to moving your head and neck to, to look down. So it takes practice. 
but it can be done. And I am certain, especially if you have pain in the back of your neck, a lot of muscles strain and spasm, you'll find that those recommendations will help you. Lastly, you want to talk about when you have pain in one leg, but not the other. And it may not be the whole leg. It could be foot pain. It could be knee pain, hip pain, and stair climbing can be difficult. Rule of thumb, you want to go up with the good leg and down with the bad. So you have pain on one side and not the other, and you're climbing the stairs upwards, you go up first with the good leg, leading each step. And when it's time to go down the stairs, you go down first with the bad leg and then step with the good leg. That's about all I have for today. Thank you for joining me. And I'm hoping it won't be that long. It is, I'm fortunately not quite ready. We're getting things ready to start the practice. I'm looking forward to working as a health coach for people with chronic pain, um, helping you to live full pain-free or much, much, much less pain uh, in your life, being able to enjoy, enjoy your life. Certainly, if you're interested working with me in the future, you can go to the website, Chronic Pain Rescue, and send us your email address. We can certainly keep you in touch as to when those telehealth hours will be available. You can also like us on Facebook. That would be great. Instagram, or if you're seeing this on YouTube as well. And thanks for joining me. Until next time, peace and blessings.